Welcome back, guys, to Stevens DIY Auto Repair. Today, we're here with the 09 Mitsubishi Lancer. We just had this car towed in today, guys. We have a check engine light. Customer wants us to diagnose it. So, we're going to be doing some... Usually, we would drive it around, but um, customer had a, a scanner of his own, and he said a, a transmission code popped up, so... We don't want to drive this just yet. We want to look it over and do our own code pulling and see what's going on before we try to take this on the road and potentially blow up the transmission. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to do some visual checks. Um, I might try to bring you along to as much of it as I can, and we'll go from there, guys. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so first we're gonna go ahead and check the automatic transmission fluid. Make sure that we have enough fluid in the transmission. Or not too much, uh, either way. So, we're good. It might be just a tad bit over, but at least it has fluid. So the backstory is the customer states that when he's at a stop, it takes a while for it to accelerate. It's kind of like bogging down, doesn't have full power. Um, but once, once he gets it going, it's fine. It just takes a while. So now we're gonna go ahead and check the engine oil. Maybe we'll check the engine oil. How about that? Okay, so our oil level is good. And I haven't done too much yet, guys, but I've already noticed back here, and this is why I wanted to check the oil fluid as well. Looks like we have a really bad leaking valve cover gasket I don't know if you guys could see that little puddle of oil down there but okay so we're gonna go ahead and keep doing some checks okay so now we're gonna go ahead and check the filter and that's supposed to be like a little gasket the filter is actually not that bad Here's our air intake. Not seeing any holes or major, nothing too much, too bad. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up doing some visual checks here under the hood, and then uh, we'll plug up the scan tool, see what kind of codes we have. I'll bring you guys right back. All right guys, so we got the scan tool hooked up. Okay, so it's a Mitsubishi. Automatic select the VIN, read it, and okay, we're gonna hit okay, that's the right VIN number. Uh... Okay guys, so I didn't show you everything, but we went ahead and pulled some codes off. We have codes for um, an EGR valve and a uh, oil pressure sensor two um as well as a bank one sensor one code i believe um so we're gonna go ahead and view some live data 
And let's see, what, what are we gonna pick from? Auto position sensor. Let's check that out. Let's check out the EGR stepper motor. Oil pressure switch. Base, engine control relay. Fuel pump relay. Airflow throttle position sensor. Oxygen sensor front. We'll do all the oxygen to target EGR. No. Uh, we got so much to choose from, guys, but. Let me really look at, let's see, what do I want to look at? Let me check out the stepper motor. Should we graph it? Can't imagine we're gonna turn the car on. Here's our throttle, throttle position sensor. Front oxygen sensor. Seems to be acting a little wonky. GR Okay guys, so we came under the hood. We disconnected the air duct hose and removed the battery. Here's the battery tray. We just kind of put it off to the side because it has a connector on it. 
And what we're gonna do is come in here. Uh, see if I can see. So right under the throttle body here is gonna be. Let's see. Let's see, does that help? So that right there, right here, is our EGR valve. So we're gonna go ahead and unbolt that and test that to make sure that our EGR valve is good. So let's get to it. All right guys, so finally got our EGR valve off and it's pretty nasty inside. We're gonna go ahead and test it though here pretty soon. So it's basically just two um, 13 millimeter bolts sorry scratch that 12 two 12 millimeter bolts you just have to literally take almost everything apart to get to it uh, i thought i could get to it without taking all this apart but it wasn't gonna happen i had to take the battery off the battery tray the air filter housing the inlet tube I had to take the radiator hose off. I had to take this other radiator hose off. We got this one clamped off to try to save as much coolant as possible. There's the throttle body. And we even had to take the transmission pan or uh, the transmission um, dipstick off and the housing dipstick off just to, just to get those two bolts. So. Now we're going to go ahead and test this EGR valve and see if it's any good. So I'll bring you guys right back. Okay guys, so we're now we're going to check our resistance in our EGR valve. So we want to test our leads and they're good. So we're going to test pins 1 and 2 and they should be between 20 and 24 ohms. Okay, now we're going to do two and four. Perfect. Now we're going to do uh, four and five. Okay, and five and six. And we're good. Okay guys, so our resistance is good, but there is a lot of carbon deposits in here. It's really bad. I don't know if you guys could see it. Okay guys, so we conducted another test on the EGR. I just didn't really show it because I can't have it hooked up too long. So basically what I did was uh, I connected it to battery positive and then connected the the first the number one and number thir uh, three terminal to battery negative so what was supposed to happen according to service information is we're supposed to um, it's checking the stepper motor so well what it was supposed to do was make a little shutter it was supposed to vibrate make a little little noise so we checked um the top pins nothing check the bottom pins nothing it was just completely dead so i'm believing that it's a bad egr valve um so yeah i think we're gonna go ahead and call it a bad egr valve so we'll call the customer see what they want to do it's a fairly expensive part um so i don't know That's that's the route we're going. Uh, the other codes at the moment don't really mean much because uh, an engine um, oil temp, uh, not oil temperature, an engine pressure sensor um, and even a, is, is not gonna cause the symptoms that's happening with this car right now. So I'm not too worried about that just yet. Um, as well as the bank one sensor one, I believe that's the code we got. Um, 
that's also not going to end up causing the symptoms we're having. What will cause the symptoms is the EGR valve. And that's a code we got. And that's why we went after this first. And it looks like it's bad. So we'll go ahead and see what the customer wants to do. And then we'll bring you guys right back. All right, guys. And we're back. So we went ahead and contacted the customer. Um, he said, go ahead and do the job. So now we've ordered the part. And it's going to take a few days to get here. So, yeah, we got the job. We're going to go ahead and um, wrap this video up. This is basically uh, going to be our diagnose, uh, how to diagnose a bad EGR valve video. And then uh, once we get the part in, we'll bring you guys back and uh, show you how to install it. So, there it is, guys. Remember, test, don't guess. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button. If you guys would like to be notified when I put out another video, make sure to hit that bell notification. And subscribe to my channel, guys. Come on, guys, help me out here. Make sure you subscribe for more informational video and DIY projects. So until next time, guys, have a good one.